Good afternoon, good morning, and good night, uh, wherever you are. So uh, this is Hamid Tisouch uh, from Laboratory of Knowledge Inferencing Medical Image Analysis, uh, short Kimia Lab. So is, in this presentation, I will be talking about matching breast biopsy images to the digital uh, WHO atlas, so the WHO atlases for uh, different cases, uh, specifically for cancer. Um, uh, we know that WHO has uh, a large body of work on classification of tumors. Uh, there are many reference books, blue books, that classify tumors. And usually in this, these books are prepared, these atlases are prepared by a large number of uh, subspecialty experts uh, for, uh, for specific uh, uh, subtypes and tumors. And um, so it's supposed to provide international standards for both diagnosis and, and research. So we, beyond the books that everybody can buy, uh, now we have also access to the um, website of WHO and all those information can be access, accessed and many, many pathologists across the globe do use those online platforms. So the WHO atlases are interesting because again, for the first time you have access to digital cases pre-selected after long, long dis discussions with experts. So we will be focusing on breast only uh, uh, for a pilot project. And within the breast, we will only focus on epithelial tumors of the breast. This is still large enough, but that will give us uh, the, a narrower focus such that if there are any problems, we can localize it and address it uh, properly. So there is a massive amount of information available. So if we, uh, for example, uh, uh, look at specific carcinomas, there are metadata, other type of images, snapshots, descriptions, and even you can open the whole slide image for that specific subtype and look at it, work with it, zoom in, zoom out, uh, look at the details such that uh, um, you may compare the case that you're having under the microscope or with your, uh, on your monitor, you compare it in a more comprehensive way with the cases that we understand as a standard. So, uh, and um, of course there are, there, are, uh, there are many cases that are common, there are some cases that are um, uh, rather rare and uncommon. Microglandular adenosis here, lobular carcinoma, rather common, uh, adenoid cystic carcinoma, and so on. So there are many cases within the epithelial tumors of the breast that would be the center of uh, uh, investigation for our pilot uh, project. So what is missing in the and the WHO atlases online is basically a search and matching functionality that hopefully can assist pathologists worldwide to do a more comprehensive examination uh, and virtual consultation basically. So the idea is, the vision is that uh, having a WHO server somewhere in Lyon, France uh, where many colleagues in the uh, tumor categorization group work um, and they give access to pathologists across the globe such that they can upload images with their phone, with their computer, with their workstation uh, and uh, see whether they can match those images against the standard WHO cases. So the idea of matching answers is relatively straightforward, has a literature of more than 30 years um, has been around for quite some time, has received a boost in recent years through the uh, success uh, of deep learning. So you basically send a query and then there is an AI uh, set of AI algorithm that operate on the index that you show atlases and then you find similar cases and you use the uh, standard descriptions or metadata that WHO has in its archives and blue books, and then you somehow visualize it and send it back to the inquiring pathologist who could be anywhere uh, on the planet. So now the idea is that through the search, we can build some sort of computational consensus. So if we send a query image to a search engine and we find, let's say the top three similar cases, 
those cases have been um, diagnosed by a set of different experts than the one that is uh, asking the question. And we know the diagnosis, we know the uh, metadata, we have uh, uh, cases that have been confirmed. So we can basically provide a computational second opinion and say, this is what it looks like uh, to be. So, and hopefully over time, uh, more guidelines are created such that by using such tools, we can push the variability down by, by providing fast access to uh, uh, similar morphologies that uh, in many cases have done also similar or the same type of primary diagnosis. So the, what we want to create is a computational second opinion so uh, or a CSO report. So that report that computer generates after, uh, after uh, com finding similar cases would be a list of likely matches, so which are basically primary diagnosis. And matching degrees, to what degree is this matching papilloma, to what degree is this matching mucinous uh, carcinoma, and so on and so on. And of course, you want to visualize the regions in the query image and the images that you found to show what, what histology is matching as a sort of explanation that you are, uh, you are providing a likelihood of uh, anatomic morphology uh, similarity. And then a synopsis of WHO standard descriptions based on the numbers that you calculate. So you may just select one of them. You may uh, fuse uh, different descriptions and provide a aggregated um, um, uh, explanation of the, of the information that you're providing. Optionally, you, you may recommend a primary diagnosis, at least for research purposes, with, 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 with some confidence values. Uh, if that may provide actually a lot of value if it is reliable in uh, developing uh, spots on the planet that access to highly specialized pathologies is not given. And you may send those computational second opinion reports to any device, among others, the handheld devices. So on the left, si uh, left side, you see that you may ask the user when the user is uploading images, you may ask some question about magnification, uh, about device, about image type, and so on. And they may not know, for example, what, what, what is the magnification of the image um, for, for various reasons. Maybe they have the microscopic snapshots and they have not saved that information and it's difficult to say what magnification it is. But then in the middle, you see that we find some matching cases in WHO uh, Atlas, and then we say most similar 77% uh, with this. Uh, and that, and also you may provide similarity with normal uh, tissue with no, uh, with no uh, abnormality. So, uh, and then you provide the best matches that you find in detail. You go to uh, uh, the, uh, in the anatomic detail and provide the uh, cell density similarity, shape similarity, gland shape similarity, and so on. So you can provide a lot of useful information for the pathologist to to, uh, to quantify the similarity in a useful way. So we are preparing data for this pilot project at the moment. So we are working with our community research hospital in Kitchener, Waterloo in Southern Ontario, the Grand River Hospital, and we uh, have access to the archives to extract anonymized uh, information. So we are looking at um, uh, WHO classification, and then we find the uh, matches in the archive of the Grand River. So we want to find microglandular adenosis and then intraductal papilloma and so on. We go one by one. So far, we have collected 140 cases, uh, which, which consist of more than 2,400 whole slide images. Uh, and uh, so we, we will use them as the first test. So if, if these images are being sent to uh, the ATLAS, to that uh, website, can be correctly uh, identify what they are because this, this uh, images and this diagnosis that we have from Grand River Hospital, they are verified. We know that, uh, the, uh, we know that the diagnosis is reliable. So, and of course, then we go into the details. So, and if we, we put basically uh, patches at uh, high magnification, and low magnification as well, 
uh, uh, vis a vis each other. And if I if I look at the microglandular adenosis from our Grand River Hospital and look at the WHO standard case, um, uh, can, can we really match it? We are doing some uh, visual analysis. We are trying to find uh, diverse cases to account for pleomorphism and uh, to create a, a case study that we can then hopefully run the first experiments and get uh, some number. So we know that uh, if, we don't, if it is unknown what type of data we have, uh, whether we have normal or abnormal, it's difficult. So what we are doing for different cases, we are basically annotating uh, the tumors and uh, an anatomic pathologist in our lab is looking at them and both for WHO images and for our community hospital images. We are grabbing the cases, the, the regions in the whole slide image that contain the lesion, which, which may or may not be uh, uh, malignant. So, and uh, again, again for, di for different cases and different uh, subtypes, we are doing that. So we think the matching will be much more, much more reliable if we only match the abnormalities, the lesions, whatever is normal, we may not match, um, or we may match in a different way after we know that's normal. So that, uh, in that case, um, uh, looking at similarity will be uh, very different. So we are doing some algorithmic preparation uh, for the pilot projects. So there are many challenges. For example, people can really upload different type of images. They may upload the whole slide image as 4DX. They may just grab it at 10X. Um, they may just upload at one patch at high power with their cell phone. They may uh, grab several patches at high or low power. So there are all microscopic snapshots. We don't know what image is coming. So and we have to be able to, we have control over the WHO cases, but we don't have control and we don't want to restrict the user. So uh, what image to send or not to send. So we want, we want to let them send anything uh, they have and they have a question. Uh, and we may be forced to dismiss some of the inputs. So we are, we are looking at some of the preliminary results. Um, one of the questions is, can we really distinguish many subtypes? The most part, big part of the literature uh, of AI and uh, histopathology, when you look at the papers, are um, uh, uh, really common cases like uh, like in, uh, uh, lobular carcinoma and ductal carcinoma. So, uh, but if you look at the epithelial tissue, you saw that we have some 30, 40 uh, uh, soft lesions. Uh, and uh, so the question is, can we train something that uh, can distinguish so many different classes of one tumor type, namely breast, Tumor. So that question that we are investigating, it looks okay, but there, we, are, we are seeing uh, really new challenges that we have not encountered when it is about just one or two uh, primary diagnoses for a, for a tumor type. The other question is, can we really identify normal tissue? That's paramount. So when uh, people can submit, up, uh, upload any type of image, then we have to decide whether that image is normal or not. We don't want to match normal tissue per se. So they could be useful in some cases, but generally for matching uh, abnormalities and lesions, that may not be very useful. So we need to, we are using a different data set that uh, uh, only focusing on uh, uh, without any lesions. So just normal breast tissue. Can we understand and learn breast tissue or not as part of the algorithmic preparation? There are many challenges that we are dealing with. Uh, one is, uh, is the image, uh, uh, people, when the people upload images, uh, the first question is, is the image really breast tissue? <laughs> so people may try to just uh, fool the software or they may do a mistake, uh, we don't know. So we need a breast tissue recognition engine that just look at the input image first and say, yeah, that's breast tissue, let's process it. The other question is, uh, is the image contain, uh, does the image contain any abnormality? So if the image is completely normal, then we don't, we don't want to process it. So we should be able to recognize normal breast tissue. And then the question is, uh, do we have any uh, major fluctuation in staining if you look at the population of breast images that we process? And if yes, then we need some sort of adaptive stain normalization. So uh, uh, um, next question is, what is the magnification level? So we may not get the whole slide image 
the user may not know the magnification, so we need a magnification recognition component. So uh, um, are, are people providing a patch, whole slide image, microscopic snapshots? So we, uh, we, we will know that, we will ask them, and it's relatively easy to figure that out. But that means we need a multimodal training to generate embeddings for any type of this image, so which uh, may be quite different, and we may need to branch out. So uh, the other question is, how can we, uh, how can match replace search? Because at the moment, most like um, WHO images, uh, atlases are basically uh, every case, every subtype has only one sample carefully selected, which uh, everybody knows that that's not enough to account for the diversity in the morphology. So, uh, but for the time being, we have to live with that, which means we, we are not really searching, but we are matching. So you need novel region of interest indexing to, uh, to really understand and represent that uh, abnormality, that lesion in the image that we are getting. So many colleagues have contributed to this uh, work. Dr. Bawai, our lab manager, uh, and uh, Mahja bin Sajadi uh, for data collection. Uh, Dr. Ricardo Gonzalez has spent a lot of time on images, delineated them, uh, selected the diversity, make sure that we have matching cases with uh, WHO. So the, the contributing members to the pilot project, which is suppo supposed to start next year and goes for three years, uh, myself and Dr. Ian Cree, so we will be the principal investigators, but we have, as you see, many uh, other uh, co-applicants um, co and collaborators. Um, we have uh, local colleagues from, uh, for example, like Cambridge, Ontario, Dr. Anita Bain, uh, an atomic pathologist, Dr. Uh, from outside, of Canada, we have Dr. Pantanavis from Michigan. Uh, we have two breast specialists, Dr. Suzanne Don from UHM Toronto, and Dr. Susanna Koss from BC Cancer Center, uh, and uh, another uh, two other computer science specialists in AI and imaging, Dr. Bashashati from uh, UBC Vancouver, and Dr. Ranamoyan from Kimia Lab will be part of this. So this project will go for three years, and uh, hopefully we can then launch help. WHO categorization group launch that histology matching system as a pilot project and then collect data and see how it goes and then hopefully we can then um, uh, extend to other body parts and other tumor types. So a personal note, a note for myself, so if uh, my affiliation will change after uh, November 1st, so if you are uh, looking for me uh, after November, so I will be uh, in at Mayo Clinic and continuing the same type of work. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll be glad to uh, discuss questions in the chat group.